Hey everybody, welcome back to Vedic Say. I'm Dr. Dhaliwal, and it's my honor and privilege to introduce you to my mentor and good friend, Mr. Simon Chikoisky. How are you Simon, doing, Mike? Thanks for your time. Uh, yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah, buddy, thanks. Simon, I wanted to jump right into this with a big question, but before doing so, I wanted to work off the notion that life is relationship. Mm -hmm. This question or this notion seems to have many different levels. Mm -hmm. The relationship of one to another, the relationship of man to nature, and ultimately the relationship of one to one's true self. Mm -hmm. And last week we briefly talked about this uh, conversation and we talked about stream and flow of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And there seems <clears throat> to be a natural progression and development of consciousness. Yeah. Well, you know, consciousness is, is one. It has many forms. So just like uh, water, for example, water can be a solid, mm -hmm. and that relates to the body. Water can be a liquid, mm -hmm. the mind, and water can be a gas. And so consciousness has different levels of density. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of relationships, relationship is uh, the ability to relate. And uh, we relate to our bodies, we relate to our loved ones, we relate to our, our God. Mm -hmm. And all of those three levels of body, mind, and soul are basically duties. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the ancient Vedic uh, uh, philosophy, they were seen as, uh, you have a duty, you have a role to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's not as important how you feel about the role. You know, when the baby's crying, you, you feed it. Right. When the car tire is flat, you got to fix it. Right. And the car doesn't care if you're angry about it or if you're happy to do it. You just have to do it. Right. And uh, there's a Sanskrit word called karyam. Mm -hmm. uh, that describes this means that which has to be done okay. and a lot of our relationships and the roles that we play in life are, are simply cardium they just have to be done okay. um, and um, however there there are ways to do what has to be done to promote fulfillment to mm -hmm. give us the sense of I feel great about doing this and a sense of having fulfilled my purpose on this planet but Simon there seems to be basic necessities of life, survival, mm -hmm. food, shelter, and clothing. Right. Then it seems that once, go, once a person goes beyond the primal needs, food, shelter, and clothing, then there's a sense of pleasure seeking. Right. What, what about the progression of this type of consciousness? So, okay, so as you know, this is called Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has the same God. Whether you live in America, whether you live in India, we all have the same God, and that God is happiness. Mm -hmm. And um, happiness comes from different things. Okay. So, for example, if you're homeless and hungry, happiness comes from a full belly, mm -hmm. from having food, having shelter, having basic necessities, uh, a sewage, having sh a roof over your head, having a, a shower, mm -hmm. uh, having your physical needs met. Right. And in Sanskrit, this was called artha. Mm -hmm. And artha is composed of two things. One is, it's called yoga and kshema. Yoga is, uh, in, in Sanskrit, means Apraptasya praptihi, meaning getting that which you don't have, ah. the, the necessity for life. Sure. And then kshema is praptasya rakshanam, protecting that which you have. Mm. So, okay, now you have access to food and shelter, but you also want those things to last. Okay, for security. For security, correct. Okay. So the first need of life is, is having physical security, the body. And that's, you know, before you start thinking about God and religion, if you're hungry, mm -hmm. food is your God. Right. Then once you rain is your God. Rain Weather exactly. Is your God, right? okay. Exactly. And then, you know, once that need is met, you have a great meal. Now you say, Well, let's turn on the T V. Right. What what's on you know, what's in the movies? Entertainment, pleasure. Right? Pleasure, sex, uh, you know, uh, enjoyment. And these are the needs of the mind. So okay. the mind wants these things. Once the body has been fulfilled, now the mind's desire comes out. Well let's say Simon, <clears throat> after chasing and pursuing pleasure. There's a notion after a period of time that pleasure and pain are two opposing sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. Then what follows after that? So the next step is, you know, intellectually people figure out once their, their physical and their emotional needs are met, that they want to do something mm -hmm. on this planet. So, okay, what am I put here to do? And this is where dharma comes in and uh, knowing your dharma type can help you steer, steer you in the right direction. Um, so what does that mean? That means you know, I want to do something. I want to be somebody. I living want to living with purpose. Living with purpose. Having meaning to life, and and being part of of society, improving society in mm -hmm. some way. Whether you're an auto mechanic, whether you're president, whether you're a poet, mm -hmm. uh, you you give your gift to the world. Okay. 
Okay. So once your basic needs are met, you're, you're giving your gift. Okay. And everyone, you, me, everyone is born with a, with a special gift. And the, you know, nothing is useless on this planet. There's a, there's a phrase that I like to uh, say in Sanskrit that says, a mantra maksharam nasti, nasti mula manoshadam, a yogiha purusho nasti, yojaka statra durlabaha. Which means, there is no sound that is not a mantra. There's no plant that's not medicine. There's no person who does not have a purpose. But it takes skill to find these things. So the skill to find these things is, is simply a matter of education. It's what we're doing here. It's what, uh, you know, what higher learning is really all about, except we don't get that in, in college anymore. Mm -hmm. So the idea of how to share your gift is ingrained in the Vedic culture. And um, you know, they, Ayurveda is the science of how to take care of the body and the mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Sanskrit and mantras are the science of how to how to use sound for for very specific purposes. It's mm -hmm. the perfect vibrational language. And um, Jyotish Vedic astrology is the art of helping you find your purpose. Mm. So through these tools, one can find their dharma types. Yeah. So using your Vedic life map, uh, you know, I've I've sort of developed a way, my own way. I'm sure there are other ways to find the the dharma type mm -hmm. as I define it. Okay. And uh, there are five Dharma types, and each one can show you how to express your, your talent, your true purpose in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I've written about that in the book, obviously. Yeah. You know, one thing I found interesting about your book was that it's not several different paths. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the products or the outcome of happiness, love, finding God. Yeah. It's not on different paths. No, and it's one path. The notion of almost finding your path and being true to your path, these notions are met. You know, the first thing, you know, I, I see clients uh, fairly often, and uh, clients who are single or divorced, and they want to know, you know, when am I going to meet the, the right one, yeah. the one. And the first thing I say is, the love, God, and prosperity are all on your path. And, uh, find your path, and all, the, all those three will find you. Mm. So the idea is, uh, and I'm going to talk into the camera here a little bit because it feels more natural. Sure. Um, the idea is when you find your own path, then prosperity, love, and, and consciousness and God comes to you. And there are five paths, as I mentioned. And, uh, you know, people always say, well, if there are five paths and there are seven billion people on the planet, <laughs> you know, how does, how does that help? How does that make me unique? Yeah. And, and I, I just like to say, listen, how does knowing if you're a man or a woman help you? Yeah. And the, these are two basic archetypes, male and female. Mm -hmm. But think about how much influence they have on our waking life, from the moment we get up to how we comb our hair, what clothes we put on, uh, even our names yeah. are largely determined by gender. And you, you make the notion of the power of myth. Mm -hmm. Does this fall into the archetype of the myth of what we see ourselves and how we project ourselves into the Myth is everything. Yeah. What, what you believe about yourself, about your country, about your family, your values. Mm -hmm. You know, people have done amazingly heroic deeds, mm -hmm. both horrible and wonderful, yeah. in the name of a myth. Uh, and myth in this case means not something that is false or fake, uh, but in the true sense of an, an operating system of belief. Right. And I, I go one step further. I believe that archetypes, are they are our internal uh, uh, archetypal matrix, but they're actually, I believe they're genetic, they're in our genes. Wow. They're that part of, they're that much a part of us, that they're these blueprints. Mm -hmm. And I can look at a person and knowing their type, I can predict their behavior. I can say, listen, this person is an educator. They're going to behave this way. In mm -hmm. private, they're going to be this way. Yeah. This is the type of re relationship they prefer and so on and so on. You know, Simon, I wanted to leave off with, we've been talking about a journey and a path, but there's I guess a saying in the Gita, I mean, I'm just paraphrasing now, that curving upon or curving back onto oneself, mm -hmm. I create and I create again. Mm -hmm. I know I'm paraphrasing it and I'm off with the quote, but what, what is meant behind that? Well, this is Krishna speaking and Krishna is describing the, what, what the Buddha called samsara, the constant creation of, of the universe. And, you know, we got to the third level. We talked about the body's needs, mm -hmm. then the mind's needs. Yeah. Then the intellectual needs for, I want to be somebody, I want to do something in the yeah. world. Well, for those three things, God is not necessary. Okay. We see people in the world 
fulfilling all of those and and they don't necessarily need to have an idea of spirituality or god in their life god comes into into the equation when even when we're doing our dharma and giving our gift to the world there's still the sense of there's something else there's Mm -hmm. something more Mm -hmm. and this is what uh, in sanskrit is called moksha Mm -hmm. moksha comes from the root uh, much which means to release to to free yourself from desire Mm -hmm. so the ultimate it basically says that find that happiness in finding which there is nothing else to be found. Find that thing by knowing which there is nothing else to be known. And that's the final step. And here you go beyond the, the first three desires, which are basic to every human being. And you become, in essence, you become a, a spiritual being. Um, and the wonderful thing is that the world that we live in provides all of our desires. If we want food, Food is in, in nature. We, want, we need air. Air is in nature. Water is in nature. Then we want pleasure. We're, pleasure is available to our senses. Sure. Uh, if we want dharma, it's in us. It's programmed. It's in our genes. We can find it. And if we want that thing which is beyond, which is really only ourselves. You know, in Vedanta they say, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. Brahma, consciousness, is truth. It's eternal. And the world of name and form is an illusion. And then it says, Jivo Brahmeva na paraha. You are Brahma. Wow. Nothing, el- n- nothing else. Mm. So you are that, essentially. So that, what Krishna is saying that I, I doubling over on myself, I create again and again. Um, in essence, the Vedantic uh, view of that is that is you. You are that creator. You are the co-author of your own life. And the more you... You live your dharma, that your dharma points you in the direction of your highest truth. But at a certain point, as we were talking about earlier, you can leave even dharma behind. Mm. I'm sorry to say it, I have books to promote, but <laughs> it's true. Books and, 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 and classes and dharma types are all pointing instructions. And once you know the way and you're on your path, like the Buddha said, you can use a boat to ferry you across the river, but once you're to the other side, you don't need to carry it with you. So... These are all instructions, but they're Simon, not the final Simon, thank you so step. much for your time. Oh, it's you bet. an honor. Um, for the people who want to contact you, what's the best uh, media? Siddhadeva.com, uh, S-I-D-D-H-A-D-E-V-A at yahoo.com. Any upcoming projects coming up? Uh, well, we have uh, talks uh, scheduled in Florida, Ohio, and um, in California, um, promoting the book. And... Um, Oh, and we're doing a certification, actually, for people who, who really find that the Dharma type help, can help them. Mm. Well, it's a wonderful counseling tool. I can't tell you how much, you know, I'm not a great astrologer, so half of my reading, half of my reading <laughs> is, is helping people find their Dharma type. And um, it's a wonderful counseling tool. So I will be doing a certification on the Dharma types here in, in a couple of months, and I will let people know about wonderful. it. Wonderful. Everybody, thanks for watching, and until next time, take care. Simon, can you? Oh, yeah. This is a song uh, about Vata Vriddhi. Karsh Karsh Yoshna Kamahatvam Kampana Shakrindraha Balanindrendriya Brahamsha Pralapa Brahma Dinata Thank you, sir. All right, my pleasure. Yep.